trying to fit into 15 minutes, I will just focus on two stories. One is what is our uh, true truth behind the discovery of this cesium formamidinium based uh, nanocrystals and, some, and the recent uh, research result, including the unpublished work. Um, so basically, um, when we started to work on this, we were, of course, inspired by the photovoltaics uh, field, where in 2012, there had been several researchers reporting on um, the solution deposition of such a material, which turned to be a very efficient uh, photovoltaic material. And, um, and basically, um, these DMF solutions contain actually not perovskite, but they contain hollow metallate ions. And our very first uh, intention actually was to use these as um, inorganic capping ligands to replace the organic capping ligands. And um, so basically, we wanted to use usual nanocrystals and coat them with hollow metallate ligands. And these usual are metal chalcogenides, pnictides, and noble metal nanoparticles. And indeed, um, uh, they replace re initial organic ligands, th these ions, replace uh, fully quantitatively and uh, thereby changing the polarity of the surface from the hydrophobic to hydrophilic because you change steric stabilization into electrostatic and you can see that as a migration of these nanocrystals from a polar to, from apolar into a polar medium. And uh, so this was quite exciting. And the, the motivation actually behind this work initially was that any previous generation of inorganic cap and ligands that we tried, mainly I'm talking about collagen based ones, they had been great in replacing organic ligands, but they were not great at, uh, at electronic passivation of nanocrystals. So they were actually introducing even more trapped states, were quenching the luminescence to one or well below 1% for this specific case of lead sulfide, but also for the visible emissive cadmium based nanocrystals. And um, how, how, uh, hollow metallate based ligands actually were much better in retaining the good electronic state of the surface. And that turned to be very useful over the subsequent years. And still, this is the best surface chemistry for, let's say, photo detectors or uh, solar cell based on uh, light calcogenite quantum dust. But then we thought, why don't we make the whole nanocrystal out of um, out of perovskite? And that led to the work which we started early in 2014 and then published early in 2015 uh, for cesium lead halide nanocrystals, showing that uh, indeed uh, these nanocrystals are relatively easy to obtain. Um, um, and uh, later we also focused on hybrid materials. Uh, for example, these two publications are those which are for the first time reporting these kinds of uh, these compositions of nanocrystals. We also had back then one publication on methyl ammonium composition, but that turned to be extremely unstable. And basically, besides one uh, paper showing this instability, we didn't proceed with them. So we rather focused on cesium and formamidinium as, as more robust uh, uh, systems. And by now, their, their emission can reach uh, phot photoluminescence of uh, efficiency of nearly 100% over the entire uh, visible spectral range. And there are many uh, studies by us and also by uh, many others on trying to use them as, um, as classical and as quantum light sources. I will not talk about those things, but I will just mention yet another rather old result uh, on the on the uh, ion exchange, something which started as a, as, a, as a failed experiment where we tried to mix green and red dots into one composite showing uh, two emission bands. But when we measured the emission, actually it turned out that there is only one emission band. And soon we understood that this is a ion exchange between the nanocrystals, which turned to be a positive thing to do. Uh, so initially a negative observation turned to be a positive thing to do because you can post-synthetically adjust the composition while you already have pre-designed the this, this, this shape, for example, platelets or cubes or wires or whatever. So this is a basically experience of, of, of this kind where 
which basically teaches us that we should not make first uh, conclusions too rapidly, especially, especially negative conclusions. And to complete the, the, the history uh, section, I would like to point that the history is, of course, a lot more complicated. Here you see, for instance, uh, a result which is uh, the, the much less known uh, work, uh, I assume, where um, uh, focused on single crystals, large bulk single crystals of, of cesium bromide doped with lead. And that actually leads to the in situ formation of cesium lead bromide quantum dots, which had been back then fully um, elucidated or, or determined by the, uh, by the optical measurement. Because if you just look at the XRD pattern of this single crystal, it will, be, it will look like pure cesium bromide. So, and, and those works actually date back even to 90s. So, uh, so the cesium lead bromide quantum dots had been known in, um, in such as, as inclusions in single crystals even much much earlier. 